Welcome back guys to the Genius Brewing Channel. Today we will be doing our January 2018 Brew and A, which means uh, a couple of things. Tell us what we're doing today. So today we are focusing on dark lagers, specifically the style of Doppelbach. What we're going to be doing is going through a breakdown of the beer style and after that we're going to be going through a couple of new malts and then hopefully finally getting to answering a few questions that you viewers have put out for us to answer. So we got Q&A, we got style knowledge, and we've got new malts coming up. Today we're going to dopple your pleasure and dopple your fun. It's the statement of the, of the, I can't go anywhere from there. So let's go into what makes a difference between a lager like you hear every bartender ever say, you want a lager or an ale, and what makes specific lagers, uh, for example, a dark lager like we're tasting today. All a lager means is that you fermented it with a lager type of yeast and then cold conditioned the beer for any you know given amount of time. Um, so today, like we said, we're going to be talking about Doppelbach, which is a very specifically um, malt forward, very rich fairly high in alcohol too, usually 7-8% um, beer. 7-10%. to 10 <laughs> Actually. <No. Okay. laughs> if you're unfamiliar with a style, a great place to start, like I've mentioned in a couple other videos, is the BJCP, which is Beer Judging Certification Program uh, style guidelines. Uh, so we happen to have printed out the guidelines that are sitting right in front of us for a Doppelbach. And basically, it's gonna be malty. <laughs> Doppelbach, in a nutshell, is a boozy, sweetish, malty, low IBU, dark lager. Here's the stats on a Doppelbach. Oof. See, and then we can, just, we can just keep doing this and then just screenshotting it. You know? <laughs> we can just show people, and then, then we don't have to actually memorize it. Okay, it's genius. So as we go through tasting these, we'll go through uh, where in the style guidelines, because obviously it's gonna be a broad-ish style. Um, that, that these fit into, and we'll tell you a little bit more rather than just kind of go through ahead and read it all because that'd be pretty boring. So next, let's talk about a new malt that we used in that as well as a couple of other new malts that you guys might be interested in that maybe fit the style. So a new malt was produced by Great Western about a year ago or so, and we decided that this might be actually a decent malt to go in the style of beer of a Doppelbach. Caramel steam! Flavor profile, nutty, graham cracker, caramel, plum. So it's like not quite a crystal malt, but colorful like a crystal malt. Check out more about that here. Then we can like, we can, we can put like a, a screenshot. Screenshot. Of it over there. Kerosene, yeah. We can have all this in the background noise while people just stare at this screenshot of this description of caramel steam. Yeah. If you want to see the rest of our Doppelbach recipes, please check it out in the description below. Uh, we don't have our Doppelbach to sample, but we'll talk a little bit about the differences between ours and these as we go through what makes a Doppelbach. This is the Spaden Optimator, and I've had this fresh on tap. It is delightful, um, hopefully. The, uh, the bottle stands to, stands to what I've tried previously. So why don't you give us a, a color description or something as we, as we pour this. The color should be gold to dark brown in color, and some versions might have ruby highlights, which I would say that one kind of falls into the brown to ruby category. Yep. Nothing that's very too light or necessarily opaque when it comes to, you know, the overall color profile of this beer. So I do get kind of a classic skunkiness, which is, it's going to be typical of a lot of foreign beers. It's one of those things that you kind of have to just get past if you're going to try a lot of imports, and you can attribute that to... Uh, Either overall freshness, freshness, or the you know bottle on date, the storage, whatever. Right off the bat, it's very sweet, but not sweet that you would attribute to something like adding a lot of caramel malt to a beer. Uh, it's it's a more sweet or rich sweetness to it. Yeah, you get that that deep kind of toasted um, version of the sweetness, and uh, a lot of the the Maillardy kind of 
What I always tell people is it tastes like when you brown a marshmallow and you pull the skin off the marshmallow and you just eat that part. So there you have it. That is the Spotten Optimator. It's good. I drink this. So let's go. Uh, let's go pollen our necks. Let's go. Uh, the uh, Salvatore Dali. All right. While we're doing this, why don't you give us a quick rundown on? Uh, let's go aroma since that'll be the first thing that we experience. So the aroma shouldn't be skunky like the first one was, uh, but rather it should have a strong maltiness according to the guidelines. Um, looks like heavy melanoidins or the Maillard characteristic that Peter was mentioning before. Um, that's usually because most of these beers are actually going to have extended boil times as well. That's also what kind of helps boost the gravity. and. Uh, Basically nothing for hops. All of it's going to be malt. Uh, it can have some sweetness, can have some light toasty notes to it, but the toastiness should not be overwhelming at all. Um, and that's basically the rundown of what the aroma should be. So it looks like oh, okay. yeah. on the Polaner, uh, based on viewing it, that one's going to be a little bit on the lighter end of the color spectrum. Obviously a little more head. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see, a, I'd say Ruby, as you described in the first one, Ruby is definitely a perfect characteristic for uh, what a, for, for, for this, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So this one actually just seems to have a bit milder aroma to it, mm -hmm. uh, but a little bit more on the sort of um, fruity side. And that falls with the taste really, uh, really indicatively too, I would say. You get kind of a glass, oh, classic yeah. German yeast fruity taste lingering up in there. Yeah, definitely drier in comparison to the Optimator. Uh, but still has a very distinctive malt strong flavor to it. Yeah, this one I'd say is you know more in line with like an Imperial Vienna Lager maybe, might be a good way to describe it. I'd say so, yeah. Um, and yeah, speaking to the dryness side of things, uh, I definitely can say that this is a, a lower mouthfeel than the first one. And we'll talk a little bit more about mouthfeel and, and all that stuff when we get to the third beer probably, but uh, yeah, overall impressions? This one's gonna be kind of, I would say this probably sits right in the middle of the range of what I consider to be a Doppelbach, um, if not a little bit on the light end. And so a little bit drier, but still, you know, a very pungent, uh, sort of almost like a dark Munich uh, base of the flavor profile with some sort of dark fruit notes as well. And overall, uh, this is still, you know, a bigger beer but also very clean. None of these beers, I will say, are should have any kind of really yeast profile to them. So, And that is the Paulaner Doppelbach. The Salvatore. So our last beer that we have is from Fine Stefano Brewery, the oldest brewery in the world, I think, right? Something like that? No, One of the oldest, if not the oldest brewery in the world. Fine Stefano Brewery. Check that for us. Yes. <laughs> if we're wrong, let us know. <laughs> um, this is the uh, Corbinian from Fine Stefaner. And immediately about the same amount of foam coming up as the first, or the second one, sorry, the Salvatore. Why don't you tell us about flavor and mouthfeel that we should be looking for? So flavor, obviously, like the previous two beers we've drank, flavor should be very rich and malty. Kind of the style of a Doppelbach. <laughs> yeah. In fact, the epitome of a double block. That's what we're going um, for. Otherwise, it looks like some prune, plum, or grape, melanoidins like we've already talked about, uh, some toasty notes, but never burnt or roasty, and little to no hop flavor. Should be well attenuated, but always malty. Uh, and then for mouthfeel, it's going to be medium full to full body. Uh, and I think these beers have all pretty much fallen in that. I would say the Spaten was definitely on the fuller side, uh, whereas the Polaner was a little bit thinner. I would say kind of falling in that sort of medium spectrum. Uh, so maybe on the kind of light side of mouthfeel for this style. Otherwise, uh, moderate to low carbonation. These have more or less been moderate and uh, very smooth without any harshness. So. I would say the first one, the uh, the Optimator, was low carbonation, uh, and the second two have been kind of towards the medium, um, and then this one uh, just aesthetically is looking maybe more towards the Optimator than the so than the Salvatore. Yeah. And head retention because these are higher alcohol beers may or not may not reflect the actual carbonation. 
this one has like all the richness of the optimator, but first of all, without the skunking. And then with, uh, uh, I don't know, almost it almost lends more into pseudo roast. I know it says roast isn't supposed to be appropriate, but yeah. it's like it's it's, it's I, getting there. I think the the roast is actually more prevalent on this than probably what the style's kind of laying out uh, for us. Uh, sort of borderline, I believe this might almost be like a great base for more of an Eisbach kind of a style, which is usually very dark um, and then also frozen. So, you know, if this alcohol were boosted up and the richness were boosted up, it would run really well. Um, otherwise, yes, this one definitely has some roastiness, but nowhere near the like you know, a stout or a porter of, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, stouter porter. Yeah. I thought it was interesting that you said uh, attenuation should be high, even though the mouthfeel should be on the lower end. Um, looking at the expected final gravity, it can it can go anywhere from uh, 1.016 to 1.024, which would suggest to me a relatively medium or low attenuation, but. But we also have to consider our gravities are anywhere from 1072 to 1.112, which is that, yeah, that in that sort of high, spectrum yeah. of, uh, you know, imperial stout barley wine sort of beer yeah. when you do get to that level. So as for this specific Doppelbach, it's definitely on the dark side of things. I can actually still see through it. It's a very dark garnet color. It reminds me of a... Doppelbach I actually brewed from Charlie Papazian's book, or at least a variation of it, uh, which is on the sort of fuller side when it comes to flavor and a little more roastiness, but still extremely, extremely smooth. So if you ever do like dark beers, uh, but you don't like that kind of roasty astringency you get from them, try this style of beer. Uh, and overall, this one is definitely going to fall on the far end of the spectrum, where the Polaner would kind of uh, fall on the other end of the spectrum. It can go yeah. lighter than the Polaner, but definitely that one's towards the lighter end of being that light ruby versus like slightly off yellow. Exactly, yeah. And we encourage you to go ahead and try a couple of beers like these. Um, other great one would actually be the Celebrator from Anger. Uh, would be a great example of another kind of darker style Doppelbach similar to this uh, before you brew your own just to get an idea of what you want to brew. So we have one more really fun malt to tell you guys about. Uh, this one is really, really new to us. Probably it's the newest of all the malts that we uh, have been recently experimenting with. And this is Special X from Vest Malts. Um, about four years ago, Vest Malts came out with a Red X malt. Phenomenal malt if you ever want to do a single malt India Red Ale. Yeah, it's, it's got really complex flavor. It's not as sweet as anything else that's in that color range. You can use it as a base malt. It's it's really good. Um, but now they have the Special X. You can't see the grape. I don't know why I lifted that up. Um, so Special X is a, is a darker uh, version, maybe along the same malting lines. Maybe that's why they called it something similar. I don't really know. Probably a similar process. Yeah, but just the darker end of it. Um, this one can be used up to 20% of your grain bill, and it even mentions box in the beers that it is good for. There we go, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it comes up with a, a lot of the, the similar sorts of flavors that you can get from like a, a special B style malt, but without the cloying, pruney sweetness that you can get from special B. It's the same kind of concept as like a, you know, a caramel steam or a, a red X, but it's just the, the darkest end of that spectrum. So we look forward to using this malt in a variety of our sort of dark winter beers while winter lasts. Um, so, we will post a link to some of the info on this uh, malt in the bottom of our video in the comments down there. And let us know what kind of beer styles you might think this would be great in. And we will try to brew them. If you don't brew them, if you do brew a beer with it, let us know for sure. I want to talk a little bit about our Doppelbach because we will be. We have a link to that um, recipe in the description below. And we also have a link to be able to buy the ingredients for, uh, for it from us on our, our e-store that we have. Um, overall flavor comparisons, I would say, to to these um, definitely lended towards the the not doppelbocky side of a doppelbock. My overall impressions of this recipe is that it aged really well. I think after the beer aged for about a month, it started to taste really good as that started to fade out. We got almost that true um, character coming through of the Munich base. Um, and some of that rich malty sweetness. Um, but it took a while. It did, and that's typical of, for one, a lager beer, and two, a beer of higher alcohol. You know, we, we do have to consider that these beers 
I think almost all three of these actually fall right into that seven to eight percent alcohol. So they're not exactly, you know, a light session drinking beer. And on top of being that and malty, you need to have both time for the beer to clarify and brighten up, as well as time for some of that first kind of a sharp hop bitterness to drop out and leave you with a smoother character. Yeah, yeah it definitely took time to get into its own and turn into something close to somewhere between this and this. So to wrap things up, we're going to do a really quick Q&A with some questions that we've received from you guys at home. First question, is it possible to do an all grain mash with 100% wheat? Yeah, totally is. So you can do a brew in a bag, it's not going to be an issue, or you can add in a little bit of rice holes to a regular mash tun, and that just helps the wheat from compacting too much, which you can lose a little bit of efficiency from. So That's right. Uh, so second question we had was, what are our favorite hops? So Peter, what are your hops? Because I think ours vary, mine vary a little bit from yours. That's that's definitely true. My favorite hop of all time is actually Willamette. It's a, it's a unique hop to pick as your favorite because it's not one of the bold, new, flashy hops. Uh, but I've used it in a lot of different beers. I think it's great in a Blondale. It rounds out IPAs really well. And I do a lot of Belgians and Sours, which I really like using Willamette for as well, so. I think I'm gonna ha go, have to go with uh, Galaxy for mine just because it was a hop that was popular what three four years ago yeah and now with you know Simcoe and Amarillo and Mosaic and Citra that's all it's kind of faded into the background but it is still a phenomenal hop to add to any fruity hoppy IPA so definitely a good one uh, so last question that we have gotten recently is how fast do we think we can do an all grain batch of beer start to finish what do you think I think an hour 30 an hour 30 for you yeah all right so hour 30 for Logan Hour 29 for me, obviously it's going to be a little bit faster. Um, I think it's possible. Maybe stay tuned for an upcoming video this spring or summer, I think, is when we can probably put it out. There we go. So until next time, as you can see, we are sporting some awesome t-shirts that we have put up on our online store that we will have links to down below if you do want to support us. That's right, and these t-shirts are gonna be limited. We will be rotating through the different designs that we go through. So if one of them looks good to you, feel free to grab it. Uh, help support us, uh, check out everything else on our e-store, and make sure if you have any future questions that you want to see on our videos, comment below. Till next time. Cheers, guys. Grab a beer. Tink. <laughs> we missed. <laughs> Fail. <laughs> that worked out pretty well. Damn it. It's 11 o'clock in Spokane. <laughs> Is that like, was that the Mary Tyler Moore show? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was. That was uh, something else. Should we get a hat and just throw it up? See what it says. <laughs> All right, let's get more drunk. Oh, God, these are so hard to jug.